This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic churned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fate drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him, yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became executioner. A single shot bound in faith forsaken pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here in the north? Is he alive? Wounded and dying. Embraces in shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Bellacor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse, ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos. And I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All routes have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah, the tome unveils a spell to summon a portal. One to bypass the Maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally. One who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. Hello and welcome everyone, La Heart here, and today we begin my Total War Warhammer 3 adventure with part one of my new Cathay campaign as the Storm Dragon herself, Miao Ying. Big thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me early access so that I could start this Let's Play early for you guys. I'll be releasing this campaign every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday going forward, so make sure you subscribe and ring that bell notification so you don't miss any of the uploads of this campaign. Also, if you want to support the channel and get an amazing deal on Warhammer 3, then check out the link to Games Planet in the description and use code DEMONS at the checkout to save a total of 19% off the game and get the Ogre Kingdom's pre-order bonus for free. Offer ends 20th of March. So let's dive into this Cathay campaign. Cathay's unique faction mechanics include Harmony, the Wuxing Compass, and the potential trade riches of the Ivory Road. Supreme Master of the Storm. I'll be playing as Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon who leads the Northern Provinces, holding back the unending tide of chaos at the Great Bastion. Our faction effects are minus two corruption, plus 10% leadership when fighting demons of chaos, and ammunition plus 20% for missile units. Her lord effects provide minus 50% upkeep for missile infantry units, and plus three yin harmony. Playing this campaign on very hard, very hard difficulty. And as always, advice, tips, and tactics are always welcome. Feel free to leave unit name suggestions on this episode part one as well for me to add into armies later on. Now, this is an early access build of the game, and while it's fairly representative of the final game, there still might be some bugs and optimization issues. However, these will be worked on for the final release on the 17th of February. So, without further ado, let's dive on in and begin our Cathay campaign.
grand Cathay, a vast empire to the east, ruled by powerful creatures, dragons, who can inhabit human form. You are gravely mistaken. We have no interest in a mere god's power. No interest in power to use against the forces of chaos? I am Yao Yi, the Storm Dragon, older than the gods themselves. You are here for a greater purpose. This map shows the energy of all things. There should be harmony, but the world is unbalanced. My younger sister, Shen Tzu, bringer of light and hope. She ventured beyond the Norskan Mountains, but was lost. Without her, without her light, darkness prevails, and our family has no comfort. Though I feel your loss, the Tome of Fates provides no insight to your sister's whereabouts. Ursa knows he witnessed her fate. Then why does he not tell you? Iron Dragon. There is mistrust between dragons and gods. If we save Ursan, he will tell us how to find Shen Tzu. Let me serve you, mighty dragons. I can reach Ursan. Lead you to him before it's too late. For one drop of his blood. Your destiny is to guide us. The armies of Cathay must breach the Maelstrom and march into chaos. Balance will be restored to the world when Shen Tzu is returned to you. Our goal is clear. To find the lost sister, we must hear the God Bear's testament before he passes into myth. I am the anointed guardian of the great bastion. Any breach brings great dishonor upon me. So prove your worth, mortal. Yes, great matriarch. There is indeed a rupture in the great bastion. The forces of Tsinch invade through the ruins of the Snake Gate and have taken the terracotta graveyard. Further along, the Bastion remains under threat from the Changer's forces, or as you know him, the dread power, Chi An Chi. Yet, despite the enemy assaults, there remain brave defenders ever loyal to you. Bolster them, and they will gladly confederate with a revered dragon. You will need such allies, for it is on the other side of the wall where the threat is strongest. The eternal siege continues, for the dark powers are never sated. And there, the orchestrator of this woe, Kairos Fateweaver, face this demonic oracle, lest he bring down the bastion. Fateweaver is insidious. And the invasion is only part of his plan. Rebellion festers in Nanyang's minds under the Changer's malign influence. Punishment must be swift to reinforce your authority. Before we can hope to take the fight into the Chaos Realms themselves, we must bring harmony back to Grand Cathay. There is much to do. Enemies! Enemies everywhere! How they play, the northern provinces, harmony. All aspects of development in Cathay are aligned with yin or yang. Bonuses are earned and penalties are suffered based on the balance between the two. The Wuxing Compass. The Wuxing Compass influences the flow of the winds of magic around the Cathayan homelands. The rulers of the Celestial Empire may use its power to bolster their defenses, enrich their lands, and divert harmful magic away to the desert. The Ivory Road. Cathayan factions can send trade caravans to the west along the perilous Ivory Road. Choices will have to be made and challenges overcome if expeditions are to be successful. Agents of Fate Weaver fan the flames of rebellion. We cannot risk such sedition reaching Nangal. 
Mission issued. Our first mission, engage the enemy, defeat an enemy army belonging to the following faction in battle, the rebel lords of Nanyang. We'll gain a thousand gold to our treasury and unlock an astromancer hero. Thank you, advisor. Obviously, there's a whole host of new features and mechanics, not just for Cathay, but Warhammer 3 in general. We'll take a look at them all as we play through this campaign. But I think we'll kick things off by diving into our first battle, which we will fight. It will be a smash for us. Uh, quite easy, but give us a chance to check out our units, abilities, and uh, obviously check out animations and just get to grips with uh, the Storm Dragon Miao Ying herself. So there she is. Got also the Celestial Dragon Guard, two units of Jade Warriors, Peasant Long Spearmen, Celestial Dragon Crossbows, Peasant Archers, Peasant Horsemen, and easily my favorite unit from her starting lineup, the Sky Junk, which is essentially a flying Hellstorm rocket battery with some gunners to snipe off enemies as well. It's also got a bomb. Uh, we'll dive on in to the battle and see all this Witness in action. Power. We go. Battle is upon us. Study your options carefully. The enemy are close. Blood will be spilt. Well, the advisor's up for it. So, yeah, decisive victory. We will fight it, but Order Resolve says we'd actually lose one of our peasant long spearmen. They've got two peasant long spearmen and peasant archers, and they're led by a Lord Magistrate. So, let's dive on in and unleash the fury of the Storm Dragon. In we go. As always, feel free to give tips, tactics, and advice. Obviously, we're all going to be pretty new to Warhammer 3, but if you do notice, uh, a feature or a mechanic from either Creative Assembly's own videos or another content creator that you think I should be aware of for this campaign. And obviously, once you guys get hands on when the game releases uh, later on throughout the campaign, do feel free to share any, you know, tips and advice you may have learned about Cafe or anything you've observed so far. Um, it's a pretty straightforward battle. Let's channel some magic. Let's risk it. Roll the dice here. See if we can get a little bit more. Won't matter either way, to be honest. Uh, nice, we have managed to channel it a little bit more. Gain two more uh, Winds of Magic points there. Let's start deployment. Now, I'll form everyone up and then we'll go down the line taking a look at them. I am good on the fundamentals of battle, though, advisor. Thank you very much. And in fact, before we fight this, because someone's going to ask, uh, Lionheart, what are your graphic settings? There we go. Feel free to pause here if you want to take a longer look at them. But let's dive back on in. In Let's uh, pop our peasant horsemen over here if we can. So they can hide in the trees and flank on around, take out those uh, peasant archers. Now, the deployment of my troops uh, kind of, again, builds on that harmony aspect of Cathay. You can see each of them have the Yang focus over there. That means their harmony is aligned to uh, Yang, whereas missile units, they've got Yin as their harmony. And uh, the important thing bear in mind with your formations is where you place your units because as you can see now they've uh, completed the circle yin yin and yang together and what that means is activated their battle harmony bonus so for the celestial dragon crossbowmen their battle harmony uh, gives uh, plus 24 reload skill and plus 12 leadership it doesn't actually uh change the stats until you hit start battle then it'll show up in green obviously changing leadership currently there's a bit of a penalty there um, and also increase missile strength for them. The dragon! Celestial Dragon Guard. Their uh, Battle Harmony Yang is more leadership and uh, melee defense as well. Um, but yeah, important where you place your units. So we'll do the same thing over this side with the Peasant Archers so that we can activate that Harmony over here. Now these guys, the Jade Warriors in the center, aren't going to get that bonus uh, because they're too far away from my Peasant Archers and Crossbows. But if we bring up the Sky Junk and just pop it behind, they're now in range of that. And uh, so everyone now has their uh, battle harmony activated let's pop now ying out in front and then let's just go down the line taking a look at some of these stats we'll start over here crossbowman. with the celestial uh, dragon crossbowman if there are um, any units you want me to take a kind of closer look at in future episodes and just in general with features in the in the campaign do let me know in the comment section as we go and i'll try where possible to kind of do little sort of spotlights on some of those features and units and as well when we have a large battle i don't think we'll bother for this one when we have a larger battle we'll try and do some nice slow-mo shots as well uh but there we go celestial dragon crossbowman uh, pretty darn nice there we've got the celestial dragon guard now uh all of our infantry units actually have uh, formation attack as well which uh, this unit will try and stay in formation uh when in melee which is nice we've also got uh charge reflection in there embracing unit will deal additional damage attacking charging enemies nice 
see their battle harmony in there. The armor piercing, anti-large. Jade warriors. Now, these guys have a defensive stance, passive ability augment. Uh, two phases to it. 10 second first phase and then uh, permanent second phase when they're not moving. Gives them extra charge resistance and armor. So that's the Jade Warriors there. Warriors. Kind of the backbone of our army. And then we've the got the Peasant Long people. Spearman. Expendable, of course. Archers. And Peasant Archers over on this side. Also expendable. So we'll want to swap those guys out with more probably of the Celestial Dragon Guard and uh, crossbows there. Take a look at this Sky Junk. Again, my favorite unit. What's the, your favorite you've seen from the Cafe roster so far or, you know, that's coming up? So we've got the Rockets at the front here. They'll fire on out. Huge range to it, 360. So I think from the start, we can easily, yeah, bombard the enemy force. They've also got gunners here uh, to snipe enemies. It's pretty slow, so it does take a little while to line up if you want to drop its uh, Sky Junk bombs. But they do do a lot of damage, which is really nice as well. We'll see if we can show that off as well. And then finally, Yao Ying herself, the Storm Dragon. She's got two spells, uh, Earth Blood and Storm of Shadows to start with. That's a nice uh, speed reduction, so she can use it to kind of lock down certain troops. Channeling uh, Storm powers there. And then she's got Wrath of the Storm, which imbues those around her with magical attacks and a plus 24 modifier to melee attack. And of course, she's got a transformation of the dragon. So we will tra transform her straight into the dragon. She will lose um, access to her spells then. But she becomes a freaking dragon. So definitely worth it. We might just cast her Storm of Shadows slow them down. But let's begin this battle. Set the Sky Junk to focus on the Peasant Long Spearman. In fact, we'll send out the Sky Junk as well. Thanks, advisor. Move the Sky Junk out here. Keep them there as long as they're hidden. Send her forward. I wonder if we can... Yeah, let's try and slow these guys out over here. So they're firing off their shots as they go. And then every so often... Fire out there. But I wonder if it has to actually be stopped to fire that. Interesting. I'm going to be in range of my archers and crossbows in a minute. And I wonder if actually we can link up her Wrath of the Storm with her Transformation of Dragon. Because I don't think she has access to that either. In Dragon mode. Fire, crossbows, fire. Fire on these guys now. They've broken. In fact, go over them. And see if you can drop your bombs. Let's drop it and then we'll pop Miao Ying into dragon mode. Drop that bomb. Boom. Huge damage. Send the Sky Junk that way. And it's time to turn into a dragon. Which is a pretty cool animation in itself. There we go. It's dragon time. Send the sky jump round. Pull the cavalry out. She's quite effective against multiple units uh, rather than single entities. I think it gets a little bit cumbersome trying to focus her attacks on them. I mean, most large units do in the, in the Warhammer series in general anyway. There she is. Try and attack against these guys. She also has like a lightning tail slap animation that she does as well at times, which is pretty cool. Fire in there. Blast them. Could bring the Sky Junk in. Oh, there we go. That actually did do some damage. Obviously got a good aura splash there. Oh, nice. That was like a lightning breath attack. I'm actually kind of surprised that she doesn't have a dragon breath. He's just like, now nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm good, thanks. But maybe that would have made her too powerful to have a dragon breath attack. Alright, end the battle. That's that. Obviously, an absolute smash. Didn't expect it to be anything else. Just pretty much using that as a showcase of what uh, the storm dragon can do.
There we have it. Absolutely annihilate some peasants. Things will get tougher. <laughs> Victory is yours, my lord. But what about the fate of those captured in battle? It can be beneficial to hold them, but sometimes leniency or brutality can be worth more. Yes. Right, so we've got execute captures for leadership. We've got venerate for 3% replenishment, but we only lost. Of course, the only units I would lose would be a couple of units of cavalry. 3% uh, not really worth it. We'll take pawn caps for 215 extra gold. We've also gained an obsidian lodestone. Uh, I can see the experience for Miao Ying as well, which is pretty cool. I authorized them. Yo. Zap, they are out of here. Uh, mission successful. Thank you very much. Got the obsidian lodestone. A potent ally has joined your ranks. Embed them in your army. Lovely. So we've gained uh, Yutang uh, Nanmen, who is our astromancer. I imagine we're probably going to rename him to Tim, but you guys let me know uh, in the comment section. More rebels infest the mines ahead. Bolster your legion with loyal warriors who rightly revere you. Right, so next mission. Advisors setting us up for that by saying, recruit some units, please. Okie dokie. The primal balance of nature is misaligned in your kingdom. Take steps to restore harmony where it has been lost. For it is the bedrock upon which your majestic empire is built. Thank you, advisor. Go on, mission after mission. Uh, restore harmony. Restore the balance of harmony. So we'll talk about that in a moment. We'll gain a thousand gold to our treasury. But yeah, keep... Uh, Feel free to suggest unit name suggestions for these guys once we get to a full 20 stack. I'll add in your suggestions. Ideally, keep them all on part one of this series. That way, it's nice and easy for me to find them all. But yeah, I think we'll probably be renaming him next episode to Tim. In fact, I'm going to rename it now. Tim. The Astro... Astro Enchant. We can't fit it all in one line. Tim the Astro Enchanter. Yeah, we'll go with that for now, unless you guys have got some better suggestions. So, uh, taking a look at him, he has the Law of Heavens. I believe all Astromancers have it, unless there's different ones you can get. We'll take a look at what we can recruit in a moment. But yeah, Law of Heavens, so we've got Harmonic Convergence, all that stuff, Custom Midnight, Wind's Nice, Wind Blast, Thunderbolt, uh, Chain Lightning, Comet of Cassandora, all good stuff, and obviously Arcane Conduit there. Actually, this is quite good uh, with all oh, the Wu Xing War Compass as well. Hello. That's very nice. Uh, he's got uh, Mastery of Elemental Winds. So when two or more units in the same army share this tribute, intensity increases the power of spells cast. So actually kind of um, makes it worthwhile having multiple spellcasters, at least with that attribute in your armies. What I was going to say is that if we want to have Miao Ying focusing on being a dragon uh, and being awesome, then it makes sense to have another spell cast in the army because that frees them up to use the Winds of Magic. So let's pop him in there as the advisor suggested. In we go. 500 gold. Thank you. Now, uh, our next mission, if we go through... Yeah, the dragon needs you to recruit two more units. Restore Harmony. Let's talk about Harmony up here. Because, again, that's the, the balance of all things uh, within... Um, within Cathay. So Yin and Yang, we're currently uh, more aligned with Yin. So we're on the second uh, Lotus Blossom here, I think, which gives us construction cost minus 10% for Yang buildings. Income from Yang buildings plus 10%. So it's, it's a detriment to Yin-focused uh, stuff uh, and buildings, things like that, when we're more aligned with that. Basically, you want to balance between characters, events, buildings, and technology to be in balance and harmony because, as you can see, Harmony effects, you get plus 20 diplomatic relations with Cathay, minus 20% construction cost for all buildings, plus 40 growth, which early game, that's huge if you can get that extra growth modifier. Income from Yang buildings plus 25%, income from Yin buildings plus 25%, control plus 8, corruption minus 5 all provinces, and you also unlock ancestral warriors. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all a game of balance as Cathay. So we need to basically get 4 points of Yang. So that's going to influence what we want to build first. So Nan Gao, I could go through all these different bits. We've got the ninth wall there. Uh, again, if you want me to take a deeper look at some of this stuff in future episodes, let me know. Uh, but for now, we're going to just go crack on. I am going to go for this Yang building over here, which gives us plus one harmony to Yang, plus 10 growth. 
Uh, construction costs are minus 4% for all buildings, local provinces, the Labour Conscription Bureau. Now, you can see it also says it prevents the construction of the tea parlour. So basically, all of uh, the infrastructure buildings i don't i think it's also yeah it's also the same through that stuff i don't think it's the same for military but for defense and infrastructure uh for cafe one cancels out the other again you can only have the yang variant rather than the yin or the yin rather than the yang uh, again all about this creating this this balance with what you build so we'll go for the labor conscription bureau that's what i want there which means i can't get the tea parlor uh, but that's that's fine because right now we want that construction cost reduction and growth rather than extra little bit of income and again the main thing is we get that harmony for more yang so in a turn we will get get down to three balance we can also focus on specific technologies you can go through the middle which doesn't affect yin or yang uh, or if you go through the top line that's all yang focused uh, bonuses uh, for harmony and along the bottom that's all yin uh, bonuses and also, I believe that kind of matches up with the type of units and buildings. All the you know, yin-focused stuff is for your, your missile-type troops. And the tree goes all the way on over here. We've got uh, upkeep cost. Again, I could spend probably the rest of the video just going through each of these um, technology bits and pieces here. But we'll have to take a look, a deep look at that later on. Let's go for drill training. Plus one harmony for yang. And also gives us plus four leadership for peasant long spoon units. Not particularly... Great, but that'll do. It's the, it's the Yang we need. So we need to recruit two units, I believe it was as well. Warden of the Great Let's go for Iron Hail Gunners. Very nice. Armor piercing missiles. They are Harmony Yin, but that doesn't affect the overall Harmony. It's only characters that do, not individual units. This is more just to synergize where you place them for that uh, battle Harmony bonus. So go for two of them. So we're going to go after the mines of Nanyang next turn. Uh, just back to objectives. Take a look at the victory conditions. So we're going for a Forge of Souls campaign victory. That's kind of the main story. Uh, victory needs to complete the complete Korn's realm, Nurgle's realm, Slanesh's realm, and Zinch's realm. And only then can you fight and win the final battle at the Forge of Souls. Um, I assume, you know, opportunities to enter each of those realms will present themselves as we continue playing on through. There's also a domination victory option as well. Which just need to take out a load of factions. Maintain control of 50 provinces. Yeah, it's fine. Go for the Forge of Souls. But there's all our missions. I like the layout of that. Right, so we've talked about Harmony. We've got the Great Bastion thread up here, which we don't need we to worry about just yet. Here. Although, as you can see, Snake Gate has been breached. Um, so, Chaos and the Warband in particular will start spilling on through from there. So, we will need to reclaim that eventually. The flyover indicated that the Terracotta Graveyard has been uh, taken over by... Um, Zinch's forces there, Sartorial's watchers. So we'll need to deal with that. Let's uh, have a look at the Wuxing Compass. So we've currently got a cooldown of that for another three turns. And then we can focus it on one of the directions on the compass. Great Bastion and Celestial Lake are probably the ones we'll be focusing on to start with, just because of um, they've kind of got the most useful initial active uh, bonuses there. So you get each of them, everything in green currently is what you're currently getting from each one, which doesn't matter. They're always active. doesn't matter which uh, point the compass is facing. Dragon Emperor's Wrath is nice because you get a, a big old uh, extreme attrition penalty applied to armies beyond uh, the Great Bastion, which is good at weakening the threat of uh, the Chaos Invasion there. But probably go for Great Bastion first for the Great Bastion threat reduction, recruitment cost, and also gives you Celestial Intervention, which is an awesome bombardment. Uh, although if we do need more money, we might go for Celestial Lake. There's also Warpstone Desert, which um, Winds of Magic will steadily decrease in strength. Um, corruption will reduce per region Cathay minus four. Emily Ship minus six per region Cathay. Not sure I'll be using that one that much, but the other three for sure. Um, but each of their reserves drops over time and then it builds back up once you have the compass focused on them. But their effects get more powerful the higher up that compass it is. In fact, if we go up here, you can see how many supplies you get how much growth you get. So that, that's good. Again, Celestial Lake early on and Dragon Empress Wrath, more control per region. A nice modifier there. Um, Caravan Dispatch available. Let's go to the Ivory Road. And uh, we've got uh, Shen Quinn Caravan. He's got 13 units. We can see his caravan over here. So this Ivory Road... Oh, there we go. This Ivory Road shows the various routes that we'll be going on. Um, and we can go off to various 
uh, different cities over in the west. Now we can change the amount of cargo value that we want to pop on the caravan to give us a higher uh, return. So at the moment, if we look at who's going to give us the most amount of money, because we could do a shorter route and get a quicker return. Because say going over here will only take five turns, give us 3,139. But if we go over to uh, Costa Drakenhof in Sylvania, I assume it's Costa Drakenhof. Yes, it is. Uh, 4,740. Uh, I thought Marienburg would be a bit higher, but obviously there's a uh, specific, I guess, um, things due to the caravan master himself. Not see if he's got any specific traits at the moment. But yeah, let's go over to Sylvania. Um, nine turns. That's fine. Got maximum amount of cargo value. You can increase that over time when you level up your caravan masters. So that's his initial force. He might get an opportunity to recruit some more warriors on the road as he goes. But as you can see, we'll see his initial path. It's going this way, but you can see the overall threat chance is high. So there's a good chance he could get ambushed or face a dilemma as he moves on through his caravan route. But we're going to dispatch him. Off he goes. And that'll instantly create him here. It doesn't affect our income, though. It's separate, which is great. Um, but yeah, a nice way of kind of gaining some extra money with some investment there. Extra um, economy management without making it too, um, I guess, too in-depth and, and dull to manage. Um, go to diplomacy. Let's do some trade. And we've got quick deal because we've got the three kingdoms uh, diplomacy kind of upgrade now to the Warhammer series. So we can instantly go in for quick deals and see who would be willing to do non-aggression, who be willing to do trade. Uh, that's what I'm after right now, Celestial Loyalists. Uh, we can also see if there's anyone interesting to do a confederation because we'll probably want to confederate with the other factions along the wall. So I'll probably avoid uh, military defensive alliances with them. Just, I don't actually know if that affects them like it did in Warhammer 2. I assume it probably will. Um, but if you have an alliance with someone, it, it tends to put them off wanting to confederate with you. Ideally, you want the other factions weaker so that you can then bring them into the fold. But let's get some trade going. Together, Appreciate diplomacy. Order and balance in the world. Um, Quan Hu. Let's go for military access. You're all the similar people I am. Let's go for that. And it's a good boost to our relations there. Give me some money. Why not? Haggleheart X10 is back. Perfect. In fact, shouldn't there have been a... I feel like there was a make it work option somewhere. Well, at least there should be. Right, put, push that through. Uh, bal balanced offer. There's a threat option as well. Um, there's also region trading. Trade settlements. Post offer. Boom. Right, close out from that. You guys also want to trade the Imperial Wardens, which are the ones next to us. Oh, they've got the Fortress of Eyes out there. So that must get wrecked, surely, pretty quick. That's going to go down thought they're up here so they've got the dragon gate and the other ones had uh, i think it's turtle gate i want to say it's called Be assured that uh you also want non-aggression yeah that's fine uh could give you military access as well um yeah go on then let's throw it all in throw it all in there you could do trading settlements of uh settlement of wen chang over there i doubt they will <laughs> yeah minus 30 it, uh, let's get rid of that. So, trading settlements, exchange settlement with this faction. Settlements often must be adjacent to the other faction's territory. Yeah, so you can't just kind of roam one it or medieval to it and just get territory on the other end of the of the world as such. Which is it, that's fine. That makes sense to me. I'm just glad that region trading trade settlements is back in a, in the Total War series. Let's get a little bit of money out of you. Yeah, two hundred one. That'll do. We could type in a manual amount twenty. I don't think it recalculates until you're back on this screen. No, it doesn't. There we go. We'll go 210. Thank you very much. Haggleheart is back. Propose the offer. The Boom. Thank you. And then we go back. The Western Provinces. So this is the other uh, cafe legendary lord. Uh, Zhao Ming. The Iron Dragon. Uh, at the moment you don't want to trade with me. What about non-aggression? Oh, oh, we've got ogres up in the mountains. Probably could throw some money at them if we wanted to. But I'm not going to worry too much. I might see if we can. Of meeting. Balance offer. Dragon. There we go. 417. We'll get about... Yeah, let's just do that. That's fine. Propose offer. You haggle. We, we did haggle, yes. Um, I won't worry about anything else just yet. Join war against. Declare war. Obey me. Which access. No, no one Lord else is wanting any of those. Not comfortable enough. 
Which alliance confederations. Be on guard. The I'm not going to offer anything there. That's fine. Right. I think that is absolutely everything we can do for the first turn. So let's get on to that second turn. Super fast end turns. Lovely stuff. That was on the fast forward as well. I'll do the next one if we get through to it today uh, at the slower speed. Get a thousand gold to our treasury. Dragon needs you. Nice, nice, nice. The rebels claim the mines, stealing the wealth of Cathay to fund their treason. This cannot stand. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I was waiting for this mission to fire. So, yeah, we now need to go after the mines of Nanyang. Take the fight to them and knock them out. We'll get the Ruby Ring of Ruin. Cool, cool, cool. I'm pretty sure the, the rewards in that are... Must be um, well, not dynamic, but they're different each time. Because I haven't seen that when I tested out this defender. campaign in the past, which is pretty cool. Uh, and here we go. We can see the that our caravan's Majesty already made some good progress down here. In fact, if we go up to the Ivory Road, we can see where he is and which path he's moving towards and where he's going to be going. Uh, we can't change his... I don't, I don't know if we can change his route once he's on it. Maybe. I'm not going to, though, because that's still the best place to go to. Yeah, his army is Chosen off. Good luck. Happy trading. Let's go attack the mines the of Nanyang. It's a period victory. Reached, and your warriors are prepared for battle, mighty lord. Study your options, nevertheless. Encircling the enemy and starving them out may be the wisest course of action. Yeah, now nah, I reckon we can take him, though. I think we've got this. Have they got a dragon? I think not. They do have Jade Warrior crossbows. Jade Warriors and Jade Warriors with Halberds, so they're pretty nasty. We have a dragon. Um, the order resolve says we'll lose our cavalry and all of our infantry. But on that, we could encircle. Uh, I believe enemies take attrition straight away now. It's just uh, turns until they'll be completely wiped out is what's shown there until they completely surrender. Let's take a look at the scout terrain here because uh, minor settlements are interesting once again in Warhammer 3 because you actually fight within a settlement, which is great. So let's dive on in and fight our second battle. Get a victory. Here we go. No, get a victory that isn't Pyrrhic. Take a look at our Astromancer and those uh, Iron Gunners. Iron Hail Gunners. So, minor settlements and just uh, major settlements, provincial capitals as well in the game. You have uh, supplies now, so you can build barricades, traps, um, blockers, towers within your settlements to... Uh, really force different play styles and also put more pressure on attacking players. Okay, so we're attacking from over here. We can attack from wherever we want. It's actually interesting because when I test out this campaign before, it always deployed me over here. And now we're over this way. We've attacked it from a slightly different angle. So the main capture point up here, the key building, is there. But that isn't to force a win. That's just the main one that I think gives a buff. Yeah, that gives melee defense plus 15% and leadership if we hold that. Um, we could press the attack from here. There's just a few. It's a bit more open to go through there. Although they do have more positions to defend. Up here, I think they can build choke points across there and there. Don't know where their towers would go, but if we force our way around that way, that can possibly work. Yeah, you know what? Let's take, let's take the position the game is offering us. Uh, we'll channel some magic as well. We'll risk that. Balance power is substantially in our favor. But it will be a little bit... Your forces are ready to storm the defenses, yet I advise caution. You face an entrenched enemy that has had time to prepare. Be wary. Thanks. Yeah, they've also got all those tours. So again, if you're a new player, they're quite useful. Dragon God. Have all your bonuses here. We could split up my forces to attack from multiple positions. I think what I'm probably going to do is just use my cavalry for that and try and sweep on up from down here. Although actually, no, you know what? I will split up. Covering the crossbows, trying to draw the enemy out a little bit. I hear the gunners here. 
Um, and, you know, we'll split these guys up as well. We will go for a split push. We'll have the Jade Warriors up here. We've still got our Battle Harmony because we positioned everyone nice like that. We'll have the Sky Junk over here. So there is Tim, the Astro Enchanter. Harmony amp amplification plus 25%. Nice. Start battle. So they're already building a tower up there. Thanks, advisor. We've already got that down. So yeah, they built a blocker over here. Or a barricade platform, rather. We can take that down with Sky Junk rather effectively, and our missile troops are pretty good at taking them out. Let's float on in. In we go. And in fact, I'm going to get Miao Ying to go dragon mode. What they built down here? Anything? No, nothing yet because they're not near any of the points. That makes sense. Push forward. They're holding up here. Trying to defend into that central point. Got a few units over here. They've got their Astro Monster. They're bringing it on up. Got a barricade over there. These guys are a little bit trapped. The Storm Send her over there. Take him out. Archers. Dragon Guard. What are you going to sit back Send there? To capture the enemy defenses. Come on. Yep, on it. Raise the dragons. Move in formation. Never conquered. Sent by dragons. Three, two, one. Drop that bomb. That's huge. Power them up. Turn this round. Take them out. Nice. Right, we can push forward. Understood. Where's that cavalry gone? They pull back over here. Let's go after those archers. The Absolutely slaughtered them here. The oh, there is a tower over yes. there. Well, that's more when you come up this section. Yeah, it's firing across the top bit here. We all need to take out the barricade though, because otherwise we won't be able to get through. Could go around this way as well, actually. Press on up. Let's attack the barricade over there. I think by splitting up our force, we've really weakened the enemy's position. They don't know which bit to defend. All right, let's turn her back into human mode for a moment. I want to slow these guys down. Oh, they built a tower up here now. To harass us because they've gained more supplies. So you can go around settlements and capture all the points to prevent the enemy from gaining supply. I think we need to worry about that here. For the defense. In Barricades down. Jade warriors. Fight go, go, go. Stone and I'm actually going to get the unheld gunners to shoot that tower because otherwise it's going to really do a lot of damage to them and bring the sky junk back on over to strike them there. He goes back over here. Flank on round. Yeah, that tower did a lot of damage to my Iron Hell Gunners. Heal them up. Hit 
like a trap then. Or was it their lord or the Astro Monster? Yeah, my gun is gone. Keep going. Nice. Off him up, take him out. Mines as one. Understood. Mines what are you guys back? The Focus on these guys. Never conquered. Move as win. Yeah, ready to hit him with another bomb. Three, two, one. Bombs away. Bye bye. Dragon mode. They got their cavalry coming back over here. Warriors. Defenders of Cathay. They're building another tower there. My mind is ready. Attack in unison. Power them up. Harmonic convergence. They'll be much tougher than the opposing peasant horsemen. A dragon on over this way. Order taking them all out there. The units are all gone apart from their astronauts from what I can see in the cavalry. Once that goes, he'll probably break. Order and balance. There you go. Here she comes. Got to get over those buildings, though. But no need to worry about that because they've all broken and victory is ours. Dragon over the settlement. End battle. There we go. Decisive victory. Gained an alchemist mask. Which gives the bounce spell transmutation of lead. Ooh, cool. Nice, nice, nice. Lovely. At last, the defenses have fallen, my lord. The fate of those that remain is yours to determine. Good, good. So, yeah, we've got options of occupy, loot and occupy, sack, or raise. We will go for occupy. We won't be able to move on as well. So, complete that mission. Gain the Ruby Ring of Ruin. In a fireball. remains in the hands of the rebel lords. Bring the entire province back under your control. There we go. So, that's kind of the, the opening sort of quest chain as such to secure Gunpowder Road. So we need to go after Nan Lee over there. Interference will cost you. So we'll recruit some more units here. We can actually get some Jade Warriors because the mines have got the training camp building, which is great because they're up to a tier three building, which is perfect for a minor settlement. So that's all good in there. Uh, our Labour Conscription Bureau, we can upgrade that again for more growth construction cost as well. It doesn't give us any more harmony, but that is fine. So yeah, character's giving us four... Uh, buildings are giving us, yeah, one towards Yang, which is good. So bring that balance. We're only three out right now. So it has slightly lessened the yin impact. Uh, we'll gain a shield of Tolos. Nice. So there's some Redhorn tribe beastmen. Okay. I stand apart. Right. Root Marcher. So take a look at her skills here briefly. Uh, that top line, obviously, her more unique one there. Gives Aura of Majesty at rank 12. That's when it unlocks. Uh, Harmonious. Diplomatic relations with Cathay. I'm assuming that's other Cathay and factions. 
control, corruption, reinforced bastion, construction cost of great bastion buildings, master of storms, that um, call down to law of life spells. Rush doesn't actually have lightning spells in here. I mean, the first spell I want to really go for, Paravian's pretty cool, but I want to go for the uh, Missile Mirror, because I remember since seeing that in the trailers, it looks really cool. So it basically reflects uh, projectiles back towards the firing unit, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got Talons of... Talons of Night looks pretty cool, actually. That's a Vortex, and I love the Vortex. She's also got Regrowth in there, so that's pretty good. And then all onto Arcane Conduit. But she's also quite the fighter, so we'll be going along this top line stuff. As I said, I think the I think the top um level limit now, I don't know if there's a way for me to check at all, is now it's either like 40 or it's 50. Um well, off the top of my head I cannot remember. But yeah, it's definitely increased quite a lot, so we'll be able to spend more points. I think it's because a lot of some of these um skills will have multiple points to them as well. There's just a lot more to spend things on. Like Lightning Strike now, uh, because of the way reinforcements now work, uh, in that they're delayed before they come into battle, Lightning Strike increases for the first two points, increases the time it'll take for reinforcements to come into battle. So it doesn't completely... Lightning Strike doesn't completely knock out an enemy army anymore for the first two tiers. Uh, it just stops... It just stops them coming in as quickly as reinforcements. But... Um, it was Lightning Strike battles when reinforcements are present. Oh, nice. So, yeah, you get to come in with reinforcements, I think. So, I don't think... No longer will you ever actually completely stop the other armies coming in. It's just you'll slow them down quite substantially. At least that's how I think it, it goes. Unless I've got the, the wrong gist of it. Um, Great Bastion in there at the end. It's kind of... Uh, it's not as good as Renowned and Feared, actually. You just get an upkeep reduction, don't get any extra movement. You've still got Logistic in there for Cast Your Replenishment. Uh, but yeah, along that top line, Master of Storms, Opposer of Chaos, Imposing Range, plus 10% range for Missile Units. That's nice. Persistent Fire. Yeah, you're going to focus on a lot of crossbows. And then there's Eye of the Storm, an upgrade. Oh, so it gives you are that available in Dragon Form. Nice, because she's currently got her... I forget what it's called. Wrath, Wrath of the Storm? Rage of the Storm? Something. Something... Rathi storming that gives her that imbue magical damage to nearby units and plus 24 melee attack to those around. This now buffs her up as a dragon, which is pretty cool. Nice. Lovely stuff. Right, we're going to put this other point into Earth Blood. Start going through her spells a little bit more. My celestial father. Tim the Astromancer, we will go through Harmonic Convergence, power up your spells as well. Favored daughter. And then we're going to recruit Defense some more Jade Warriors. I'm not going to go for anything global just because I want to be able to move next turn. And if yeah, we go for anything global, we'll be slowed down. I want to keep pushing, uh, but keeping the pressure on the enemy. Store Harmony. Yeah, we're working on that. We're working on it. We need to take Snake Gate as well at some point. I'm assuming that's going to go. It surely won't hold on to that forever. But I've also got this one as well, Dragon's Crossroad. Yeah, we, we're going to want to sack them because we can't actually hold them. So, yeah, it's Turtle Gate up here. Let's wage in all the way up here. Am I right in thinking that is home to the Celestial Compass? The Wuxing Compass? Or is that something else? Something else entirely. I don't know. What's what's your favourite bit of Cathay lore? What should I really know about? Just coming, checking all the other stuff back here on the map. Because we're up in this corner. Let's see, there's all this and there's stuff in there. Chaosy, chaosy stuff. Right, I think that's all we can do. So let's end the turn once more. Oh, I was going to slow this down, wasn't I? Show that it's still really fast. Trust built between diplomatic parties opens the door to further cooperation. A trade agreement may be possible with your foreign partners. Let your merchants flourish, for industry drives war. Another mission. So establish a trade agreement with any faction. Not sure we'll be able to do that because we've, I think we've traded with all the trading partners we uh, could do already. And we've got another mission. Seal the gate. Capture and occupy the following settlement. Snake gate. Yep. Because the forces of chaos are spilling on through that breach. 
We've got a shrieking blade and a thousand gold, but before we can deal with that. Yet the forces of Tinch have broken through the Snake Gate and defiled Cathay's interior. Restore your honor. Destroy them. Yeah, so this is kind of coming back to that flyer we had at the start of the campaign. Tinch's forces have pushed on through and taken the Terracotta Graveyard. So we need to seal that breach and defeat them at the graveyard to oust them from behind us. But so many missions. We need to deal with these rebels first as well. We need to oust them from here to secure our flank so we can then turn our attention back up here. Warple shield. Gosh, we got enough missions here. Seal the gate. Trading places. Take gun powder row. We're still trying to do that one and restore harmony. To be fair, we've had those two for a little while. Trading place is an easy one. And those two are obviously just kicking off now. Three turns in. What? Oh, everyone's sending off caravans. Nice. Where's our caravan? Okay, it's going down here. It's now actually it's made it past the oh, the highest threat. To it to be fair it's now a much lower threat we're going through uh caracazorn now so yeah they should be safe but obviously threats caravan will increase as your kind of campaign goes on because you'll make more enemies essentially there, must be there we go uh, I've had one or two that have made it all the way through without any ambushes, but then others that have just been ambushed at every single possible opportunity. So I'll just have to see how things go. Right, we need to go take Nan Lee. I don't know if they, where that army went, because it was in Force March here. I don't know if the Beastmen took it out, so let's just move this bridge first of all. Ooh, okay. Yeah, they pulled their army back here. I am no one's slave. So that... Plus the garrison could get a little bit think? spicy. To fight for me, I think I'd like another cluster of units before going in. Just trying to think, what do, what do I actually want here, though? Do I want more iron hell gunners? We do have the reduced upkeep, though. A little symbol there, because obviously that's part of our lord effects, faction effects, I think. Um... More gunners or more infantry for this one. We're, total missile units, we've got four already. I think let's take two more Jade Warriors and then we'll go in and attack next turn. The Force March, they've got another one building on up. Another Lord, so that's going to be fairly tough. We can't fire this off for another turn. But okay, and then we need to turn our attention back around here. How is the Great Bastion threat looking? Not too bad. Got that building up there, so that's nearly done. Uh, trade, 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 trade. Tyrant. Okay, might be able to get one with the Blood Guzzlers. Quick Cafe deal. Yeah, for that. And then, balance offer. Woo! I mean, that's not, that's not worth it. <laughs> that is not worth it. We could try threatening them, but I don't want to go to war with them. Obey me. It's the only ones that are going to think about it. Sons of the Mountain. Obey me. Blood more. I wonder if maybe these guys wouldn't want as much. No, they're going to want even more. Okay. Okay, well, we'll come back to doing that one at some point. Um, I don't think that's got a timeout on it. No. Wait till we've actually got a reasonable trade agreement that isn't going to cost us a fortune or until just they like us a bit more. Okay, let's do one more end turn. Bloodmore. Snaggle Soup Stealer. That is a fantastic name for an ogre. I love it. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh-oh. Caravan Encounter. Hungry, hungry ogres. Smash Gudger. There's a stench on the air. The unmistakable aroma of cooking bones. A band of ogres burst forth, drool dripping from their mouths. They look on hungrily at your retinue. Their leader shouts out his demand. They'll let you pass if they can eat some of your meat. And they don't mean the cargo and the caravan. Okay, so we can either fight them or feeding time. We <laughs> we sacrifice a peasant long spim. I mean, they are an expendable unit. And we gain plus 40 diplomatic relations with the blood guzzlers. Um, I mean, that's probably the more sensible option to kind of just shore up our, our borders with the ogres. But this is our first encounter with them with our caravan. I say we fight them. Close victory. Auto resolve says we'll lose no one, but I think we will open 
fighting against these ogres against smash gudger at sell the next episode he's got three units of noblars he's got a uh, saber tusk pack and he's got some man eaters obviously he's uh he's got a slaughter master uh, as himself a wizard so we'll dive on in and fight that one there that's where we'll wrap up this first episode next episode will be out on friday i hope you've enjoyed part one of this brand new warhammer 3 cafe campaign uh let me know your thoughts so far down in the comment section until the next one don't forget to comment rate and subscribe follow me on facebook and twitter type under the legion check out my affiliates and sponsors games planet and overclocks uk till the next one ciao for now